All right. Good evening. It's lovely to be here. Um, as Tim said, my name's Jennifer. I'm from the MasterCard team. And one of the most exciting parts of my role is having the opportunity to think about how we shape commerce in the future. And in particular, thinking about the role that payments is going to play in that. And I'm delighted to be joined on the stage by, uh, by our dear friend, Uli, um, who is the CEO of Ride. And um, today, we're going to chat with you about what's happening in the mobility and payment space. But before we do that, we wanted just to show you a brief video that hopefully gives you uh, an opportunity to imagine what the future of payments might look like in urban mobility. How do we get from A to B? In today's evolving cities, the answer isn't always straightforward. There are more options than ever for moving through our urban spaces. But finding the right one, the one that gets people where they need to go, when they need to be there, and for the right price, isn't always as easy as it should be. Transportation is as complex and as diverse as the cities it serves, but travelers need simple, seamless, and reliable options at MasterCard. We're working with our partners to pioneer a frictionless future for urban mobility. A future where people use the tools they already have to make navigating the urban environments effortless. MasterCard is already processing billions of mobility transactions every year, playing a key role in the evolution of public, private, and automotive mobility. We're finding new ways to improve urban mobility experiences, even as those experiences continue to become more varied. For public transport, we're helping drive down the cost of revenue collection while delivering a simplified experience for riders. In private mobility, we're eliminating both barriers to entry and helping to speed riders on their way. And with automotive, we're seizing the opportunity of connected vehicles to digitize traffic payments in and around cities. However people choose to move around urban environments, we're building scalable and seamless solutions for mobility operators and the people they serve so that getting from A to B can be as easy as ABC. Okay. So it's predicted that by uh, 2050, more than two thirds of us are gonna be living in an urban environment. And this seismic shift in the way in which we're going to live needs to be coupled with a seismic shift in how we're actually going to move around that area. And the key to that is going to be thinking about the way that we can travel in a frictionless way, both through public transport, through the automotive capabilities, as well as through private mobility. And as we're thinking about that, you know, it's, it's, it, we've really already started on that journey. Many of you, if not all of you, when you traveled here today, probably tapped. You tapped on a bus or a tube or a train, and you know, that contactless technology allowed you to reach this, this Excel center today. But in the future, what we've also got to think about is what will be the next steps. We're incredibly proud of the partnership that we have with TFL, and there are many other partners who provide those absolutely crucial infrastructure capabilities that create frictionless transportation in other parts of the world. If you think about TransLink in the Netherlands, uh, the ferries in the Maldives, you, where you can tap now, and also bikes, where you're able to tap and ride in Helsinki. So this journey has begun, but where do we go next? And it's going to be through innovation and the new technologies that are evolving that give us the opportunity to create new frictionless experiences and to do that through collaboration. And Uli, I think that's where I want to bring you in to talk a little bit about the partnerships and the collaboration that you're seeing, not just between us, but between the rest of the industry as we start to think about how we can bring frictionless payments into the mobility sector. Yes, sure. So first of all, Thank you, Jen, for having me here uh, today. I'm very pleased uh, uh, to, to, to come here and uh, explain uh, also our partnership uh, with MasterCard. Um, so we at Ride, we see ourselves as a front runner in in-car payments, in-car commerce. And we work with uh, several OEMs. Uh, one of them is, for example, Mercedes-Benz. 
and um, we are focusing on vehicle related services uh, and um, with, the, with the goal to create seamless transactions around the use of vehicles. So for example, we um, offer digital fueling, uh, car wash, tolling and soon also EV charging. Uh, and I'll give you an example uh, what we are uh, providing, for example, through Mercedes-Benz um, car wash. Usually if you um, get a car wash uh, in, in most European countries, you drive to the forecourt, you walk into the station, you pay, you get a code, you go back to your car, you drive to the washing station, you put the code in the box, you go back and then you drive in. So we're talking about seven or eight steps that you have to go through, which uh, are first of all not customer friendly and don't really make sense. And if you have a Mercedes-Benz, you uh, uh, just can uh, drive to the wash station and uh, click on I want to pay this uh, car wash and drive in. Yeah, so, and this is what we call a frictionless experience and uh, we do the same thing for fueling and, and, and other services. Um, our partnership with uh, MasterCard is obviously of, of great benefit for us uh, because, for example, we are processing the payments uh, through MasterCard Gateway uh, and we offer our customers, of course, MasterCard as a payment method. And I think this is also uh, for the benefit of MasterCard because we are in a business that is evolving right now and uh, we see adoption rates getting higher and higher. People are enjoying this frictionless service and uh, therefore um, you are also right now at, uh, at the right time in this business uh, and we see it, as I mentioned, uh, evolving very strongly. Uh, so the question I have, uh, Jen, is that uh, I heard that you doubled the number of acceptance points over the last five years to more than 100 million uh, globally and um, I was wondering, is this due to digital transformation, the rise of embedded payments and also what role does uh, mobility uh, play in, in acceptance? Yeah. No, thank you for that. You're absolutely right. So, you know, MasterCards are now accepted at more than 100 million locations around the world, but frankly, that's just the tip of the iceberg. You know, we're now at a point where you know, all of your smartphones are now becoming acceptance devices, and we have an opportunity for vehicles to become acceptance devices. So this is the next sort of transition as to how we think about acceptance moving forward, particularly in the mobility space. And as you probably saw in the video earlier, you know, we, we are in a great position, and I mean we collectively is this mobility community, we're in a great position to start to move the payments experience further up the mobility experience and the interaction that we have with the customer, therefore giving us all the opportunity to introduce stickiness with the customer with the, with the driver or the rider at a, at a different point in their journey that maybe we've had before and encouraging them to utilize and interact with our branded products um, at, a, at a different stage. Um, and this you know, technology, as we've said, is already happening, it's already out there, but in small pockets. So we need to be thinking about how do we bring that into the mainstream. And rightly, the pressure and the questions are on us as a, as a network who provides this infrastructure to make sure that we're bringing standards to this uh, opportunity so that you can find the ability for a customer to make a payment no matter where they are in the world, no matter what transport type they're using, no matter you know, what, um, what type of payment method they want to use in the same standardized way. And if we can do that and put that framework in place through partnership with the industry, then we'll be incredibly well placed to each of us deliver the right customer experience. Um, just last year, we processed around 4 billion mobility transactions. Um, and obviously that means it's really front and center around innovation and investment that we want to make in this community. But we need to do that through partnership. Um, and we need to do that through listening and to the collaboration with the industry as a whole. Because if we do that, then we will find the ways to make things simple and convenient and secure in how we, uh, in how we move forward. So with that in mind, really, if, if we take that mantra around it being simple and convenient, how do we then translate that into a connected car? How do you see that playing out? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, first of all, I think there are numerous opportunities out of the connected car uh, when it comes to payments. Uh, as I mentioned, we are right now focused on vehicle-related services and we see adoption rates increasing. And if you think about uh, later in five or ten years down the road when you will see autonomous driving, there will be lifestyle-related services in the car. So uh, people will simply sit in the car and have not much to do. So they will uh, e either order stuff on Amazon, they will watch Netflix or read the local newspaper and have a subscription for it. And um, these are services that will be paid out of the car. And um, the benefit also here is if uh, people already have a card on file, it's very possible that uh, if these services are then paid out of the car, all the other services will be paid through this. So we think it's, it's the start of an evolution. When you look back, um, we had a physical card. Now you have lots of device payments, obviously. And uh, for sure, these device payments um, mainly smartphone right now will will stay, but a, a piece of it will move to to in car, yeah? and uh, and this is why I think it's an important topic, and and the future is bright. Also, when we uh, look at uh, cohesive services, uh, for example, when you commute here in London to the city, you might park your car at, at an underground station, and why don't you purchase uh, your your underground ticket out of the car? So these are easy use cases. Uh, that uh, could be implemented, I think, quite soon, and which make completely sense if they are frictionless. And if you use uh, biometrics for identification uh, and other things like that, and I think then uh, this this topic will really will really increase heavily. Um, so, uh, Jen, w w how do you see the future? Maybe in, in five or ten years, how do how do payments go into mobility, and how do you see the development coming up? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think the next five to ten years in this space is really going to depend upon um, how we collaborate collectively in terms of creating, uh, you know, the capabilities. Um, I think if we are able to co-create across the industry um, and bring together the standards and the capabilities, then we're going to be really well positioned to transition from what today is really driven by um, you know, utilizing contactless with a physical card. How do we digitize more? How do we potentially allow the smartphone to have a greater role in the mobility place? Um, and then also, how do we also in, um, enable connected car commerce, as you rightly pointed out. I think if we're able to scale up those ideas uh, through this, you know, through the collaboration, if we're then able to use that to bring more people into the digital economy, then we'll be, you know, incredibly well placed for us to drive more transactions um, and also greater engagement through the different channels. Because, you know, the, the players in all parts of the mobility sec sector whether or not you're targeting the driver of a vehicle or the rider of a vehicle, you know, we'll, be, you know, we'll have the opportunity to provide them with services you know, through this capability. Um, and at the end of the day, if we can demonstrate there is a benefit to doing this to all the component parts, then I think that you know, will give us the impetus to see the growth in the next five or ten years. Yes. Yeah. Is there a particular focus that you think we need to have collectively in order for us to, to transition forward in that five to ten years? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's, it's all about the customer experience. So if you create a frictionless experience, as we see with, with the smartphone, it's, uh, everybody is, is doing the this tap, tap payments. Yeah? And, and because it's easy, I don't have to put in a pin. It's very easy. And this is what needs to happen also in, in mobility to really create seamless um, frictionless experiences and then I think uh, I think this these services will, will also take off yeah. yeah super all right I think that was kind of the main areas we wanted to cover in this conversation um, but thank you thank you for your time I hope you enjoyed the event and I hope you enjoy the events this evening thank you thank you